distinguished and honored guests, visiting parents from very far away, staff, students, and all of our friends of Bodwell. We are gathered together this morning in our new gymnasium and new cafeteria to celebrate a long-awaited moment. It is the day in which we officially declare open Bodwell's East Wing. Around two years ago, this place right here was little more than a parking lot. Now, after endless hours of hard work and creativity by many contributors, it is so much more. My name is Stephen Gooby, and I'm privileged to serve as one of the principals of Bodwell High School. On behalf of Bodwell, I'd like to warmly welcome all of our guests and everyone here on this first day of our academic school year. Welcome. This morning, you will hear about how this expanded building is more than just a building, how it is a special home away from home, for many of you, an ambitious place of learning, and a special feature of our local community. To begin today, and we were, we were lucky to be welcomed already uh, by Mr. Baker, it is important to recognize the lands upon which our school sits, the unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, and to acknowledge our hosts and neighbors from the Squamish nation. To help us better understand this important connection and to challenge us to take the best foot forward in our new place here, we are incredibly honored to welcome back to Bodwell a familiar presence Elder Bob Baker of the Squamish Nation. Elder Baker, or Sa'apalok, is the great-great-grandson of Chief Joe Capilano. Sa'apalok has been exercising his culture through singing, dances, and many presentations for 35 years, more than 35 years. He is a composer, choreographer, and a dance group leader, dedicating his life to reviving, learning, and enacting Squamish traditions through his leadership and practice. And we welcome him back from Hawaii this month as well. Please join me in extending a big Bodwell welcome to Elder Bob Baker Sa'apala. Chuk Mahat, OCM. Tan Kushaman Sa'apalak Stomoksa. Very happy to be here to start off this occasion. I'm going to use a traditional song coming from one of our lady ancestors, a song that we use to bless occasions, to bless canoes when a canoe is being transformed from a log into a new identity. We have ceremony for that. We have songs to mark that occasion, special songs for occasions like, like this, so that everything takes place in a proper manner. The song used to bless homes also is a song that neutralizes any negativity, anything that may have been left on the floor here, may have followed you in, or maybe you just have a concern. You would like to send some medicine to a loved one somewhere. That also is what this song is for. But it is basically designed to wipe away any negativity so that everything can begin in a good way in this new life, this new journey. And then I'm gonna ask my cousin to to share a few words as we are we are the same family and and there you go tag team so this song is known as tum tum slolum again it is a way that we use to welcome a canoe a totem pole even a paddle into our family. We let it know that it is something 
and it'll be cared for and uh, will always be in our consciousness. We'll always be, we'll always be aware. Ocean, snowbird. Whoa, Cousin, tell Sailowit. Good morning, everyone. My name is Yilt Sailowit. I'm also a descendant of the Baker family. We're cousins. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for acknowledging that you're on the Squamish Nation territory. This is very, very important to us. And just to briefly tell you that when my late father, who lived to be 90, Chief Kotlacha, this whole area was reserved. There was no bridges, there was no big buildings in the 1920s. He spent every day in his canoe with his grandma, Mary Capilano, going over to the other side of the harbor where she sold baskets. Now that is just less than 100 years ago, so it's really important to understand that 100 years ago, no bridges, just Indian Reserves churches, very small Vancouver, to this beautiful, vast city it's become. So it is important to us as Squamish people that um, it is acknowledged that it's Squamish territory. And I'd like to thank um, Paul and Kathy for remembering that. And the school's now blessed, so you will have a wonderful year for sure. Orchika, we'll see you. Thank you so much, Elder Baker and Ms. Halls, for leading us this morning. I would like to welcome our principal of academics and one of the founders of Bodwell High School, Ms. Kathy Lee. Good morning, students, parents, teachers, ladies and gentlemen. 
On behalf of our school community, I must thank so many people now that we come to the successful completion and opening of phase three of our campus, this lovely East Wing. First, you, students, parents, staff, and neighbors. You have been tolerant and supportive of the construction. We teach, study, work, drink coffee, and Thomas Haas across the street. In the last two years, while the noise, the dust, loading and unloading was around, were around. Now today, we have invited many distinguished guests from our community, both our geographical community and our professional community, to recognize and thank them. The leaders and staff at the city of North Vancouver, they are insightful and forward-looking, guiding and collaborating with us for three years on this project. They work ahead of, almost, of us almost all the time. And uh, many professionals, architects, engineers, auditors, lawyers, designers, artists, and financing institutions have put in a lot of wisdom supporting us in many ways. As a school, we are surrounded by educators from the Ministry of Education, other public and independent schools, the international education field, uh, post-secondary partners, and education consultants who help us on different level. There is also an important sector that do not normally come among us, but today we invited them. They represent and protect the interests of our international students and parents. They are the Vancouver diplomatic offices of many countries where our students come from. To give you an example, they contact the Canadian immigration when some young students got stuck at the border service. They help to notarize and authenticate many important documentations. They visit our school and talk to our students and to encourage them. So I'm going to introduce our guests one by one, especially those on stage and some on the floor. And uh, please rise uh, and, uh, uh, to the, so that the students and parents at the back can see you. I'm going to first introduce the uh, very important guests on the stage. Uh, we just don't have enough seats on the floor, so we invited them on the stage, but they need to be well seen and recognized, and I really like parents during the tea ceremony to walk up and talk to them. Um, so from the first one on my right-hand side here, Mr. Doug Scott, he's the architect, the mastermind of this whole building and design, Mr. Scott. Council Maria Jimani Espritia, Councilor for Colombia. <laughs> Mr. Peter Froese, Executive Director, the Federation of Independent School Associations. <laughs> Deputy Council General Akira Uchida, Councilor of Japan. <laughs> now, a very young one here, Xi Zheng Henry Wai, Prime Minister of the Boardwell Student Parliament. So, he is a very young Prime Minister, you know, still a long way to go. Mr. Alan Schroeder, Director of Global Advancement, Ministry of Education. Mr. Paul Yin, President and Co-Founder of Boardwell High School. Mr. Craig Keating, he sits in the middle for a reason, acting mayor of the city of North Vancouver. <laughs> Vice Councillor Xiao Chen, Councillor General of China. <laughs> Elizabeth Brin, Senior Manager, BC Council of International Education. <laughs> now, of course, Elder Bob Baker of Squamish Nation, our very lovely neighbor. <laughs> Councillor Peter Lamba from the district of North Vancouver, a little farther city next to us. But thank you for coming. Uh, you know Mr. Stephen Gooby and Council Fidel Herrera, Councillor for Mexico. 
You have a lot of fans among our students, including Constable Rockhill, I'll introduce later. Mr. David Webb, President, Darwin Construction. He supervised and is responsible for the entire construction. So if you have a question, ask him. <laughs> now, there are other, you know, a lot of important people that help uh, the school. As I said, uh, city staff. I have not seen em Ms. Emily Adin. Are you here? Yes, yes, Emily. Director of Community Services at the City of North Vancouver. And uh, Mr. Michael App, Director of Planning. Yes, over there. Uh, chief, uh, Fire Chief Dan Pistilli. Uh, Fire Chief is a very important people in the city. Please, you can recognize him in his distinguished uniform. And don't pull the fire alarm unless, unless there's a real urgent fire. Otherwise, Chief will come after you. And uh, Constable Rocky, I just mentioned, our school, our police school liaison officer. Now, I must introduce other professionals who work closely with Bardwell. I might not have greeted everyone, but I'll see if they are in here. Uh, Mr. Paul Fairweather, our lawyer, not here yet. Traffic is really bad. Mr. Ms. Joyce Lee, not here. Oh, Ms. Joyce Lee is here, also our lawyer who helped Bardwell a lot. Mr. Patrick Chen, our auditor, not here yet. And Ms. Melanie Ma from the Royal Bank, uh, helping us make this work. Now, there are other important friends and partners in the community, and I have Mr. Tian Hua, Tim Tang from the Trade Taiwan Economic and Cultural Office. Mr. Tang. And uh, I have the veterans who are always uh, very close to our school community, Mr. Fry and Mr. Anderson from the North Shore Ven Veteran. They are in special uniform. Many of you know them and you have taken a lot of pictures with them, but if you need more pictures, you can go after them and take pictures. And of course, Mr. Stephen Smith, now he has a new capacity as chair of the North Vancouver Public Library, our former principal, Mr. Smith. Mr. John Montgomery, education consultant, have been very helpful to board. Well, Mr. Montgomery. And then Mr. Wade Baker, father of a distinguished alumni, Sierra Tessa Baker, Mr. Wade Baker. <laughs> Ms. Faye Hawes, you've met, she was on stage. She's actually former coordinator of First Nations uh, Education Center on the North Shore. Miss, uh, Mrs. Maggie Yip and Mr. Kelly Yip, they are here. Mrs. Maggie Yib is uh, the founding chair of Success, a very well-established social service agency, and Mr. Kelly Yib, they are both members of uh, Success and Foundation. Now, I also know that Mr. Alex uh, Yaluz has said from the North Shore Chamber of Commerce is coming. Are you here? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Miss, it's Miss Alex uh, Yaluz. Thank you for coming. Now, our neighbor across the street, uh, Thomas Haas is not here yet, is he? He's busy making coffee and chocolate. Uh, then Mr. from Level 10 Fitness, uh, are you here, Mr. Kyle, Kyle Guy? Not yet here, okay. But I must tell you, there are so many uh, partners in the community uh, who are really you know, supporting the construction of the school, and now uh, it's coming to fruition. We are so happy. And then I, again, on, on behalf of everybody, please, uh, one of our six L's in the school is educating our students to lead. And what is more important, when you see distinguished community leaders around us, you see with your own eyes what they, how they walk the talk and how they do things, how they serve the community. And I really like our young students to learn from their example and really be leaders of tomorrow. And parents, please stay and mingle and talk to them when we have the tea reception. Thank you, everyone. Every year, we have a special day, which is the first day of a term, of the fall term, representing the start of a new school year. I have been to 26 of them. This is the 27th uh, first day of the school year I'm here. I remember 
one very special one. I think this one today is going to be the second most memorable first day of school. The one I remember most was in 1991, September the 6th, when Bardwell started in a very humble, small rental building in Vancouver in the Kitsilano area. And then we converted two floors of a kind of office building into a school, and we had our first six students and probably about eight staff starting that day. I remember it was around eight, eight o'clock or something. I was still busy cleaning the floor and making sure that the entrance is clear. And of course, today, I cannot compare with that day. See all these people here, this honorable guest here, see the, the, the new building here. And it makes me think that I'd like the students to, to see this. You know, you can always start with the first step. That when you start in the first step, it doesn't look great, but those are the most important days in your memory in the future. And try to keep that memory, and many years down the road when you accomplish success, then you look back and you will value so much that moment. Um, well, we spent 12 years in Vancouver in that humble building and also a nearby building uh, as a, our first dormitory for 33 students. And then we moved over here 14 years ago. And I must mention about um, our guest here, Mr. Craig Keating. I remember meeting her, him in, in the council meeting. I was pretty nervous. And um, um, I think Mayor uh, was there too, right, during that time. So we went there to ask if we could use this piece of land and make it into a boarding school. We had to apply for rezoning. And uh, we were very nervous because, you know, we, we, if they said no, we would have uh, a lot of trouble. We, have, we couldn't really uh, implement this change. And I'm really grateful for the council members, for the council at that time. We were very new here, and at that time, as an international school, it was not the most common uh, operations in the city. However, I admire the vision of many of the council members who, and also many community people who went to the council meeting in support of our application. So we got our rezoning, and now this land, we could build a school here with residents living here. Actually, along this whole area, there wasn't any residents. We went back to the council many times. Once again, they approved our application to add more building and add more building. And until three years ago, we got the approval that we could change the building ratio of this piece of land so we can actually build a taller building here. Thank you very much. And please pass our gratitude to the council of the city. And together with them, of course, I, the pleasure to work with city planners, uh, community services, fire department, police, and they are our backbone. They're supporting us. Whenever we have trouble, pick up the phone, they are here right away. And then we started to know about people here, friends here. We have lots of uh, services. You know, KPH is all around the corner who service our building. We have uh, eminent sign doing all our signage. We have a fitness center here that our students use, of course. We have Thomas House that all our students enjoy uh, their, their sweet thing. So, Bartwell is here, and we anchor here, and we will be here for a long, long time. And that is, on that basis, um, my partner, Doug Scott, the architect, start, we worked together about 16 years ago when this was a bare land. And then we visioned the future school. We tried to use our imagination the best we can because we had no idea how the building would be supporting our education. And then we just knew that we want to continue our boarding school tradition. So the top four over there, where now the girls are living, uh, they are all boarding places uh, for 100 uh, beds. So that was how we started. And later on, we kind of talk, and we come up with the idea of extending a west wing over there, where actually a few years ago, the boys were occupying the third and fourth floor as their residence. 
and now they are all for girls. And then again, more recently, we come up with this idea of increasing our boarding capacity to 500 beds. So why are we doing this? I, you know, lots of people ask me about it. Paul, you want to grow a school, you want to grow a school. How many students you want that you are, you'll be happy with? Actually, I like to clarify that really. Growing the student population has never been an intention of building more, more floor areas. It is that we have been in search of a purpose, a characteristic, a meaning for this school. We like to create a kind of education that will really meet, specially meet, the needs of international students from around the world. Over 26 years, we found that students going to a very good school, however, without family support, because their parents are not with them close by. And of course, we always arrange homestay families who are very helpful and caring. But still, students in this age, as a teenager, high school students, they need more support, they need more care and, and guidance. That's why we believe that international students need some more well-rounded uh, protection, guidance, support, and nurturing environment uh, for them to, to be benefiting from this international experience. So all the time our expansion is really trying to make ourselves into a suitable environment for the nature of students we're trying to serve. Together with this, it is a vision for us that the students would every hour, every minutes of their time will be well spent, best spent. We don't want to, uh, the parents are sending their children away to us. They trust us. They, they know that their child has only one 14 year, year old and one 15 year old, one 16 year old. If this time is missed, their growth and development will be limited. So we like to make sure that their time here away from the parent, away from their, the food and the, that they like, the friends they have back in their own place, we need to make their staying here the most useful and uh, productive and good for their development. Because of that, we have created a lot of features different from a typical school, a typical high school. For example, all new students arriving here must be boarding. So you have no choice but living here until such time you have proved yourself to be mature enough, your life skills are ready to be more independent, then you can apply to graduate from a boarding program and to move on to other alternatives such as homestay families. This actually allow the students to be coming together all the time, they interact, they learn from each other, they learn about students from other countries or area or district or or continents. That's why we formed this new idea of a six houses on a wall. Now, students, I'd like you to wake up a little bit. Can you help me to say out the name of the first house from the left? What is that? Number one, two, three. Good. The second one, one, two, three. The third one, one, two, three. The fourth one, the fifth one, and the sixth one. Yes, we have these six houses, and they are corresponding. You are wonderful students. You have been sitting here for a long time already. Thank you for listening. And then, these six houses correspond with our six hall, well, 11 halls, you know, we have boys and girls halls. And why are we doing this? We, our experience shows that, you know, students sometimes when they come here, they compete, yeah? You know, everybody wants to compete. So sometimes the boys compete with the girls. Sometimes the Mexican students want to compete with uh, Brazilian students. And we just find that the world has enough competition like that. In Boywell, let's make it a different a change. So we created these six nations, our six horse, houses in Boywell, and let's compete between them. You have a sense of belonging to each of these houses, and 
they can be girls and boys uh, in each house. Uh, there, there are there are, there are taller people, shorter people, there are older students, younger students, and there are students from Mexico, from Brazil, from China, from Japan, from anywhere in the world that might sometimes we find history of conflict between certain countries or territories. And now in Baltimore, it is the United Nations, and we have six nations here, and you belong, and you might compete with each other this way. It's a new way of looking at things, and through that, we'd like you to develop friendship, interpersonal relationship, citizenship, and leadership. In the future days, you are going to face those challenges. You have to prepare yourself well for leadership, citizenship, social skills, life skills, self-care, etc. Now, we also added a very unique program called Saturday Enrichment. Sorry about it, I'm watching <laughs> my time. We have Saturday Enrichment. Every Saturday morning, all our students attend classes which are not, te not taught by typical teachers Monday to Friday, but they are people, professionals in the community. Some of them are, um, are, are engineers, some of them are musicians, some of them are athletes, and they come to classes Saturday morning to help students to connect to the real world and also to expand their imagination of future, uh, future uh, uh, career options. And uh, we have summarized at the end six L's which are shown on the wall. Learn to excel in English, which m most of our students need that. Liberate our academic mind. We need to open any possibility our imagination can allow. Uh, live an active and healthy lifestyle. Uh, uh, lead for positive change. Look inward and forward. And lastly, love the earth and each other. We believe that this is not something we expect only the students to fulfill, but the whole community, myself, every day, I think at the end of the day, I reflect, have I done everything, all the six L's today? So I expect that this is going to be a community effort. Every one of us will be doing it. Now, if the parents are here, and many of our international recruitment partners are also here today, I'd like to thank them very much. They, trusted, they have trusted us so much that they put their child to our care, you know, thousands of miles away from them. So how they found us, why they find Bodwell, and why we choose the students, because we also screen out a lot of other applications. We look for qualities, and I think parents will look for this kind of thing from Bodwell as well, that we are good developing young people's independence. We want them to be well-rounded, not only good in math or science or only good in academics and only good in playing basketball. We want them to be well-rounded. We want them to be global-minded. They not only see a tiny little bit of their own area, they expand the mind to the globe. They appreciate diversity. They have no problem seeing people, meeting people, making friends with people who are different from them in color, in language, in culture and they are all university bound. They want to pursue a university degree, they want to go further, they want to be useful to the society. Not necessarily Canada, but their home countries or the world, to the world. So this building is about that. This building is not to just to grow and have more students. This building is to fulfill our vision of a truly 21st century international boarding school. And I, I have the partners working here, Doug and David, Nelson, and uh, all the engineers, Brad and, and Scott. I can't finish the naming of all of them who have worked so hard in the last two and a half years making this a reality. I'd like to thank the students and the staff who are so patient with the dust and noise and everything. And every time I ask them, is it OK? Is it too noisy in your class? They said, don't worry, Paul. Don't worry. We know it is necessary. We'll be soon getting over with it. And now today, the, the promise is delivered. Your patience is being paid off. Thank you very much, everybody. I have to go. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much, everybody. My name is Craig Keating. I'm the acting mayor of the city of North Vancouver. 
Uh, when I came in the building today, I was informed that one of the great new features of this building was air conditioning, which is great. I don't see a clock here, but I do promise to be brief. Um, the, um, first off, I'd like to um, recognize that we are, and recognize on behalf of Mayor Masato and the entire City Council of North Vancouver, that we are on the unceded and traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples, in particular the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish nations. Um, the, I also want to recognize and welcome all the dignitaries from many countries, the Consul Generals, the Vice Consul Generals, the Assistant Consul Generals from Colombia, Mexico, Japan and China. Thank you so much for being here in the City of North Vancouver. Um, I also want to extend um, uh, congratulations to Paul, to Kathy, to Stephen and to the entire Bodwell community on this fantastic new addition to Bodwell School and our community. It is the beginning of a new era. It is a fantastic moment of the expansion of a great institution that has done so much to get, add vibrancy and life to our community here in North Vancouver. So thank you very much for having this and congratulations on this great new building. I also uh, have a special message for the parents who, uh, who are leaving their students here. Uh, and. We'll, we'll give them back to you. Um, but you're leaving your students here, uh, your uh, children here for a time. Um, and I want to assure you that in a world where there is increasingly voices of intolerance, often from the highest offices in the world, that you are leaving your children in a community that is safe, that is prosperous, and that is welcoming and wants to have your children here and to make sure that they return to you great children and better citizens because they've been here. So I want to reassure you that that will happen in the city of North Vancouver. And I also want to address the students and I want to say thank you. Thank you for so much. Because I could not imagine that when I was your age, and you might have be able to read about that in history books when I was your age. Um, that when I could not imagine that when I was your age, that I would have had the courage to leave my home country, to go to a strange new place, to leave my family and to be there. And so your courage is an inspiration. The courage of youth to go out, to embrace a new world, to change the new world for a better is the only thing that has ever guaranteed progress on this planet. And I want to thank all of you who've had the courage to leave your homelands, to come here and to change the world. So thank you very much for that. And a second message to students, uh, I recall that when the first wing of Bodwell School was opened, Paul and Kathy made a generous financial donation to the city of North Vancouver to provide a little bridge to a trail through which you go about 10 minutes walk into the city. It was an important symbolic moment. It said that even though Bodwell School is this nice, warm, comforting residential place where you stay here, please connect. There is a community out there that is welcoming. There's a community of opportunity. I urge you to embrace the different culture that is the strength of our own community here. I urge you to add to it. I urge you to volunteer in it. I urge you to become full participants while you're here in North Vancouver of the great community of diversity that we have. You're so much a part of it and I urge you to be there on behalf of the entirety of North Vancouver City Council and Mayor Masato. Thank you very much. Congratulations on this great day and welcome to the city of North Vancouver.
I would like to ask our uh, distinguished guests with the scissors, uh, keep them safe, please stand up. Students, parents, put them, give them a huge round of applause, please. We are going to do this uh, as soon as uh, our photographer Eric is ready. Just okay. Could we please ask the photographer to back up a little bit so everybody can see everyone? <laughs> ready, Eric? Okay, ready, Eric? Let me know. Okay, on three, one, two, three. Let's go.